Hey guys, Table here. Today I got a look at the new campaign reward ship, Tier 7 Japanese Destroyer Yudachi. Got Hellslinger on the screen here. This is comparable to Tanaka, but we got Twist and Track in that slot 3 instead of the Torp Reload that I would normally use. Uh, Bay and Otago. So we got Ship Concealment, we got Torp Concealment. You'll see that's a pretty effective build. Now, I'm going to compare this ship to start with, with the Kagero. Then we're going to talk about the special mod that it has available on slot 5. And then we'll wrap up by calling the rest of the game, which is a bit of a doozy. I think you're going to like this one. Uh, so, to start off with comparing it to the Kagero, we got about 1,300 less health. Uh, one less gun. We got a 1x1 one one and a 2x2 two two turrets, as opposed to just a straight up 3x2. Uh, 0.1 kilometers longer range on this. Same reload, same turret traverse, higher HE damage, 2,150 on this compared to 1,800. That's kind of balancing out the lack of the extra gun, I think. 2% higher fire starting chance on this. Same AP values, 2,200. Now the Torps, pretty comparable in a lot of ways. How we have it set up right now is kind of the default Torp configuration. Yudachi, we actually have a 8.8 .8 second second Quicker reload, so very fast cycling, 73 seconds on my build. Uh, same range, 10, same speed, 71. Same reaction time, 8.13. But we can put in a special mod on slot 5. Bumps the speed of the torps up to a blistering 80. Now it adds damage, we get it up to 21,367. Shaves off 3 kilometers of range. So you got a 7 kilometer range. 80 knots in the water. That'll drop you down to a spicy 7.21 reaction time. So very effective torps. And I've gone back and forth. We were playing this ship on the stream a lot today. And I think you can run both configurations with a lot of success. This one, of course, is the longer range, slower torps. But as you'll see here, we don't have a lot of trouble hitting them with these torps. Same speed on the ship, uh, better turn radius. 570 compared to 640 on this one. Better rudder shift? Nope. Better rudder shift on the Kagero, 2.7 compared to 3.2. I went back and double checked. I got prop mod on both of these, so that's a easy, that's a valid comparison. Kagero, five kilometer detection C rate range uh, default. Get it down to four or nine with my camo compared to four or eight on the Udachi. So we got a lot of advantages on this one. Same smoke, same engine boost, and of course we got the Torp reload booster on this. So got a lot of tools to work with this is kind of the ship those of you that have been waiting for a nice tier 7 campaign reward premium should be pretty pleased with this one i think jumping on the match here we got the akatsuki on the ropes i put those torps behind him thinking he was completely beached he was gonna have to back up but he did slither along the edge of that island managed to escape we get him very low but he does manage to get away briefly just because we were putting the island between us and him uh, we did catch a torp there on one of those guys just kind of hanging out, sitting in the back. So that's not too bad, and looks like we do have a flood that's stuck on it. So I think that's the Colorado, if I recall. And we're actually going to wind up flooding him to death. So you got to be careful there when you're damage conning those single fires like that. You know, if you get a flood stuck on you like that, you're going to go down. Anyway, not a bad start. We get the first kill of the game, and we put our team up by about 100 points. So... Pretty good. Now, the next thing we got to do, we got to get this Akatsuki off the board. If we can become the only destroyer over on this side, that, of course, gives us a lot of leeway. Now, there is still the Fiji over here, and unfortunately, if you were paying attention earlier, you saw me viciously pinging the Fiji, and my teammates responded by shooting those well-angled battleships for zero damage. So, that's typically what the uh, about the effort you're going to get out of your teammates when it comes to proper target selection, and so on and so forth. But that's not going to deter us. We're going to take the matters into our own hands and hunt this thing down. Now, this is the advantage that Hellsinger has, the twist and track. Of course, Tanaka, no, Karita has the twist and track as well. But overall, you know, between Tanaka and Karita, I tend to like Tanaka better as the torpedo boat commander. But the twist and track is valuable, and it is worth considering when you're choosing who to plug into your commanders for these Japanese destroyers. Um, you know, we'll probably see Hellsinger back at some point. You know, he was a Halloween commander for those of you that are around for that. And I would expect him to be back later. So if you're looking at this game, you're looking at the build thinking, man, oh man, I really wish I could get that guy. 
I'd, I'd be surprised if we don't see him again in the future. Here the Akatsuki does pop back up. We do manage to take him out. And we got some torps on that old boy right there. And we'll sit back and relax. What? What? Okay! <laughs> you didn't think I was going to pass that up, did you? <laughs> anyway, we got the double strike. We're up to three kills now. Not a bad start. 90k damage. And this thing, of course, if you manage to hit these torps, the Kagero torps, the Udachi torps, hit like an absolute truck. You do not want to be hit by these things. You know, they're 20,000 damage. So, you get hit by a few of them, your game's over. Fiji's coming around. I'm going to try and push here horizontally. Keeping an eye on my blue detection ring to make sure he doesn't pull inward. But now that we get around, he's kind of angled away. But keep in mind what's going on here. Now, look where we're aiming. We're aiming in front of him. He's sailing away from us. And I would assume he's going full speed. But because of the speed of these torps, and these are only the 71 knot configuration torps, but you can actually outrange ships that are sailing away from you on occasion. So very, very rare. I can not think of many situations where you can really shoot torps at a ship that's sailing pretty much directly away from you and have those torps actually catch up to them. So pretty impressive torp characteristics all around with this thing. And again, if you're into the torpedo boats, if you're into the destroyers, uh, grind away in the campaign. You're not going to want to sit this one out because this is one of the ships that you've been waiting for. Before the ship was released, some people were saying, what the heck, this is a tier 8 or whatever it was on the PC. What's it doing here? You know, it wasn't, it didn't seem as impressive on paper. You got to play the ships as they arrive in this version of the game. This is no problem running at tier 7 here. I don't expect it to have any problem with legendary ships running around. Very powerful ship, so, you know, I wouldn't take this campaign off. I generally won't take any campaign off. That's where the major value the bang for your buck when it comes to your doubloons the best deal is doing the campaigns and just doing the missions so you get the ship for 2500 doubloons anyway kudazov he's angled at us not a great torp firing angle but we would love to get him and i'm being very cautious here because we don't know exactly what's going on with this fiji i'm trying to spot the fiji do we have support no i look back on the map right as we're beginning this play the support ships are a mile away so I'm thinking, damn, we got a double strike. We got an appearance from Little John. And <laughs> would have been a great video, but of course I just wrecked my own game. So that was looking pretty dicey. But we get the smoke down, and there's no sonar. I think the Fiji has sonar, from what I recall, I'm pretty sure. So I'm not sure if he already used it or if he is unfamiliar with how sonar works. But because he didn't deploy it, we lived to fight another day. Uh, we're pinging help help furiously but i'm mainly trying to get out of here before you know he's coming around the smoke and we're still he's still within the blue detection ring that's going to be a problem so we readjust our angle so we're kind of going away towards him now we begin to we begin to uh, increase the distance so barely got out of there with that one and the fiji luckily now he's going to start taking some shots he puts down some single fire torps cheeky guy <laughs> you know i will give him an a plus for trying there Damn well near got me, though. If I would have kept going full speed, we probably would have sailed beyond that without any trouble. Anyway, he's going to go sail off to the edge of the map, and my two support ships that were way in the back are finally pushing forward, and they're going to manage to take him out. Kutuzov popping up. He's going to smoke, and we would like to get rid of him if possible. Now, if he sits in the smoke and he fires his guns, we can get within, like, seven kilometers or whatever his detection range is, sight him for the ships or sight him for ourselves and shoot him that way. So it wasn't necessarily that big of a deal to take that shot there, but we didn't really have any other ships that we were that worried about. The Fiji's obs obscured by something, and there's no other ships in our firing ring that we're aware of. So not that much of a risk involved in that play, but you always want to be careful. You want to make sure they're not actively targeting you. You're not going to be permanently spotted for 20 seconds by someone else on the team. Could have been a disaster play if we didn't really make sure it was going to work. Now, on two brothers, you always got to be watching your side and the opposite side. And, you know, pay attention to the canal running up the middle, too. Because if that red team pushes really aggressively into the base, we, of course, have to go back and defend it. Currently, 
I didn't really notice where the destroyer was. I heard him kill something on my team, but it took me a little while to find him. He's actually all the way on the white line on the north there, if you can see on the map. But as I was playing, it wasn't immediately apparent to me. So I'm trying to juggle Iowa. We want to kill that thing if he's broadside, but I'm thinking he might beach on that island or slow down behind it to protect himself. And then we got the Shiron Horse. Shiron Horse pointed directly at us. Again, when you're torping directly at someone, you're really only going to have one or two torps that have a chance of hitting them. And they're relatively easy to dodge compared to when you fire at the broadside of a ship. So it's kind of like the guns. You want to shoot broadside targets with torps and guns. Iowa does seem like he's picking up a little bit of speed, though. And we stack that salvo more or less right on top of each other. We're going for uh, another dev strike. I think we forgot to call it the Hegon earlier just because <laughs> of the double strike we were setting up. Anyway, Iowa's coming around here. He's going to get punched by someone else's torps too. Now this was a little surprising to me. Granted that Gneisenau is more forward than I am, but I thought my torps would be that much faster than him and we'd just hit, we'd hit all the torps before us even got there. Uh, we did get some damage, but the Gneisenau got the kill, so we didn't quite he on that particular ship. We'll see if there's another opportunity for a dev strike later. Now, we are uh, we have identified the destroyer for sure. I don't know exactly when I figured out he's there, but the plan now squeeze by the Sharn Horse. I don't want to get detected. If I'm detected briefly, he's not going to have his guns ready for me. Secondaries might get a ding or two, but we got plenty of health. But we got to get back. We got to defend the base. We cannot rely on one battleship to save the game. Two Brothers is very, very easy to throw on Capture the Base because it takes a little while to get back and defend. And of course, Capture the Base. Emphasis is always on defend your own base. And then when there's strategic opportunities to capture, then you can consider it. But defending your own base has to be priority number one. Almost beat yourself here. The game automatically kicks us into this uh, turret view or whatever. Luckily, though, the maneuverability of this thing holds up and we squeeze right through there. And we're still trying to, you know, hug this island as much as possible because we don't want to get spotted for very long by the Sharn Horse here and have him potentially ruin the game. Torps are closing in, and as we zoom in, it kind of looks like he probably dodged them all. But as our attention kind of turns away, we're trying to get out of here. We do end up hitting them there for the Confederate. So we're up to about 135, 136. Not bad. And we got the kills. So we do have an opportunity for the Kraken here. But more importantly, now number one, we could probably win by just staying on that base. If all three of those ships stayed on there, you capture faster the more ships you have on the base. But I don't want to rely on people who might get off the base at the last second because they don't have any idea what's going on around them. They're not aware of their surroundings. They don't know who or what they are at any given moment. We're not going to put our <laughs> faith in them to win the game. Even though they, have, they actually do end up staying on the base. And I think they do end up capturing. If it, Well, I can't remember if they capture or not. But, yeah, I think they capture. But you never want to really rely on them. Now, getting back to the base takes time and you got to calculate how long it's going to take but we have the speed boost active and going up and down the channels the destroyer really doesn't take that long it's kind of a direct route so we made the call to go over here and now if our team captures glorious they've done their job even though we'd like the kraken maybe once in a blue moon he'd rather they didn't capture the base but we're always going for the win so we don't care if they capture the base before we kill the ship but now that we're on here they cannot basically win, barring, you know, just absolute bogus decision-making. Everything would have to possibly go wrong. So we're just going to throw those torps down. We're kind of looking at that twist and track. I was, thought he looked like he was maybe going right to left based on how it was moving. But as soon as we launch those, it kind of ticks over to the right a little bit. So, you know, we're expecting him to be right around the edge of that island, probably hiding back there, cowering in fear. So, you know, the game's running low on time. Not going to end up killing them, but ended up being a pretty good result. So the Udachi, again, this thing's a menace. There are going to be a lot of them running around. Bad players will skirt around the backside and just try and torp a battleship and keep missing them for the full game. So those type of Udachi players are going to want on the red team. But good Udachi players on your team can definitely make an impact. So anyone who enjoys destroyers, you're definitely going to like this ship. Anyway, that's a look at the Udachi. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. There's always a lot of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. I do love to hear from you guys. And we'll see you all later. All right, peace.